Islam. Islam is a complete way of life. Islam is a human state. It does not only teach how to pray or to be spiritual, but also how to live a materialistic life. Islam is a lifestyle by following which individuals or societies can achieve a dignified, civilized life, which will be peaceful. Many argue Islam is a religion of peace, love, equity, and many argue Islam is a religion of violence, hatred, and inequity. Which claim is true, and who are right? If the claims are limited by both sides, one claiming peace and the other claiming violence, then Quran, the word of the God, will tell them, both are wrong and untrue. The word of the God will tell them, Islam, the way of life designed and designated by the God, is peace, love, equity, but also equally violence, hate, and inequity. One might argue, isn't it paradoxical? But the truth is, there is no paradox, but only balance in Islam. Islam is maintained by the Qur'an, and the Qur'an teaches that good and evil are not equal. Oppressors and the oppressed are not equal. Piety, righteousness, and obscenity and unrighteousness are not equal. Therefore, Islam is a way of life where Muslims love, treat equally, and are peaceful towards all that is good and hate, look down, and are violent against all that is evil. Many anti-Islamists allege that Islam is racist and intolerant towards those who are non-Muslims, and if anyone leaves Islam and becomes an apostate, are killed for no other reason but for leaving Islam. These are false allegations, and are only made to achieve instant fame, malign Islam, and to make happy some followers of other religions who are extreme in their religious views, and authenticate those ideas and get themselves rich. A simple analysis of this issue from the authentic source will clear the misconception and demonized view about Islam. The last 23 years of the life of Muhammad, the last messenger of the God, was prophetic, and the Quran was revealed in this period, and verses were revealed for different situations, which will be exemplary for the rest of mankind till the end of this world. The society in which Muhammad, the messenger of the God, was born was polytheistic in Mecca, and the messenger of the God and his followers had to leave Mecca because they were the minority and oppressed for monotheistic belief. The Muslims migrated to Medina where they had the freedom to practice Islam. There were different religions and cultures in Medina, and everyone had the liberty to practice their own thing. These societies joined together and formed a state under a single constitution known as the Constitution of Medina. Most of Arabia was polytheistic, and sheltering monotheistic people was an insult to their gods, as the Muslims were claiming there is no god except the one true god, who is above the comprehension of his creation, and therefore the images, idols, etc., are all false gods, and the one true god does not approve such representation of himself. Medina was constantly under attack by all these people, and as a minority, the Muslims had to make strategies to defend themselves and Medina. According to the authentic sources of Islam, the Quran, and the Sahih Hadith, people who leave Islam are sinners, but there is no punishment for them by Islamic court or Islamic juridical system in this worldly life as the God will punish them of their sins and the Muslims cannot do any harm to them or treat them bad. The God does not accept any deed, whether good or evil, unless it is done from the heart. Any individual compelled to commit a sin is not a sinner. And anyone who does good under force is not a saint, and his good deeds will not be accepted by the God. Therefore, even if someone remains a Muslim under death threats, it will not be accepted by the God, so it is pointless. The worst people in Islam are those who recognize the truth and rightness, but refuse to accept it, known as kuffar, and the worst are those who are not Muslims at heart, but pretend to be Muslims, known as Munafik. The God has not designated any punishment for these sinners by human beings in the worldly life, as the God will punish them in the worldly life and in the afterlife. The God has only designated punishments for worldly crimes, like murder, treason, white-collar, etc. No one was ever punished by the messenger of the God, Muhammad, for leaving Islam, but those who were punished were actually punished for treason. In fact, death penalty for treason is not a standard punishment in Islam, but absolutely based on situations. If we take a closer look at the Hadith, we will find that the Messenger of the God Muhammad had set men free who had committed treason. 
So, if death penalty was a standard punishment in Islam prescribed by the God, the Messenger of the God would not have the authority to set free men after treason. In Islam, all the laws are given by Allah, the God, and Muhammad is Allah's last and final messenger. The messengers and the Muslims have no power or authority to change the way of life which is prescribed by Allah. The messenger of the God, Muhammad, even said that if his own daughter committed crime, like stealing, she would have to be punished by the laws prescribed by Allah. Death penalty for treason is justifiable because it will prevent the cause for more debts and proper fate for a betrayer who backstabbed his own people and joined the enemy to rule and kill his own people. The death penalty is a dreadful penalty, which also works as deterrence, which prevents and frightens people from treason. Considering the situation of Medina at the time of the messenger of the god Muhammad, which was consistently under attack by the majority of Arabia, death penalty for treason was the most practical solution. And death penalty for treason was not just limited to those who were Muslims, but this punishment was also given to those who were never a Muslim. Therefore, to say that if anyone leaves Islam, the punishment is death penalty is ridiculous. Furthermore, if we look at the world statistics, we will find that there are non-Muslim majority countries who also give death penalty for treason. People who spread lies in the societies are the greatest enemy of the societies. People are different with different ideas, but the majority are capable to coexist together in peace with the difference. These evil liars want to create enmity and hatred among people and make a place for themselves to appear useful, get rich and famous. Societies and peoples will never achieve peace as long as there is a place for individuals who may be a businessman, political leader, or a religious guide willing to deceive and lie to make people enemy of one another for having different beliefs. These evil hate mongers use media and other sources to maintain fear in the heart of the people, to justify and cohort chaos, oppression, war, violence, and racism. These deceivers are the greatest enemy of the societies and peoples. There will always be chaos, oppression, war, violence, and racism as long as people follow these deceivers and give them a place in the society. These liars and deceivers will make us believe that they are our protector, but in reality, they are our greatest enemies who are turning us evil. Please convey this message with your friends, family, neighbors, etc. Otherwise, misconception of such nature will just grow without any solution. And follow us on Facebook, Google Plus and on YouTube at youtube.com slash user slash NCAPCS.